Hi there, this is Nick broadcasting to you on the Get Me Off Grid video blog. Previously I've shown you this. It's just a cardboard box, it's lined with aluminium foil, and it's got some food grade plastic on the top. And I used that for a solar oven, and I was actually able to raise a temperature of about a cup and a half's worth of water which was inside, and I could use that to make um, basically a, a warm cup of tea. It wasn't scorching, but it was warm. Obviously there's a few improvements I want to make to that solar oven. I want to insulate the box better, I want to swap the food grade plastic top for a hard acrylic top which I'd like to have double glazed possibly with a thermometer going through it okay and I want to have black panels on the inside there to, to catch the solar energy and to turn it into heat energy to raise the temperature inside even further uh, as well as to potentially have more reflectors driving the sunlight into the box to assist me in raising the temperature even further. But generally speaking, it proved itself to be quite a viable system for raising the temperature of anything or to be used as a slow cooker of some manner or other. Now, that's what I want to do with that particular device. But I also had a thought about making um, another form of solar device as well, based upon the same ideas. I've got here a stack of clear plastic food dehydrator trays. There you go. You can see it's uh, it's plastic, You can air can flow through it, and you have a whole stack of them. Now, I was thinking that if we do end up in a world without oil, whether it's in 10 years' time, 50 years' time, or 200 years' time, food preparation and storage will still be quite useful. And also, if you're someone who's going to live off-grid, you're going to probably need to find a way of preserving food at a low energy cost. So not only could you use something like the solar oven to be able to raise the temperature of water during the day so you could use that for your washing up in the evening without making a drain on the quantity of hot water you've already got gathered and stored that would be one use for the solar oven but what you could do is place a slit towards the base of the solar oven and have a slit in the lid of your solar oven and have a stack of dehydrated trays in there and then maybe with the help of the airflow, the convection Okay, as well as the fact that you can have a wide variety of foods stacked in this. Maybe you could do your dehydrating at a zero energy cost as well. If you think about it, if you are living off grid and you're getting a lot of your electricity from solar, wind power and a wide variety of other sources, you've got to think about how much power is going into your batteries, how much inefficiency there is, so that you can work out how much energy you've got left behind after the energy has gone into your batteries. You've also got to think about how long it can hold the full charge for, so you can make a guesstimate as to how much power you've got. If you want to use an electrical device, you've got to think about the quantity of energy it's using over a period of time, and build up a unit system of energy consumption. So let's say a 100 watt device being used for one hour would use up 100 watt hours. Not kilowatt hours, but watt hours. Because most of your appliances, if you're living off grid, will be low watt. Now, if you were to take a 200 watt device and to run that for half an hour, that would still use up 100 watt hours because it's twice the electrical consumption, but for half the time. So you'll still have made a withdrawal from your battery bank of that same quantity of energy. Now, using soda in this particular way, using a dehydrator, might actually work. So I'm going to have to do some experiments, I'm going to have to improve the design of the cardboard box solar oven and to use that to try and generate uh, the right quantity of temperature and conditions to dehydrate fruit and vegetables for long term storage. Uh, and I'll obviously be reporting back on that as well using those old dehydrator trays. I also want to experiment with actually using the soda oven in yet another application, which would of course be for domestic heating, and to see whether you can fit ducts to the side of an oven, so essentially you can have your, uh, your soda oven for multi-purpose use. You can have a um, vent which you can open and close, so essentially you can have them open if you're dehydrating, you can close them up if you're heating water or you're cooking food long term, slow cooking over the day. Uh, and on top of that, you could have ducts fitted to the side so that you can draw air through the system and draw that into your house basically when required. Uh, so there's lots of different ways in which this very simple device made out of cardboard, um, probably black panels, 
such as black baking trays you can cut to size and shove in the base and around the walls, uh, aluminium foil, uh, a bit of insulation material which I think will probably be plasterboard for this particular type of device as well as some clear acrylic for the lid. So I think this has actually instructed me quite a lot as to how to use this particular device and how how much you can use your creativity to take existing technology and use that in an off-grid setting. And don't forget the donation link below. If you want to carry on seeing the quality of information I'll be providing, then quite simply make a donation, assist me in continuing with the off-grid project and allow me to get myself completely off-grid and to demonstrate all the things I'm learning on the way and making sure that if I make a mistake, you don't have to, okay, when you yourself choose to go off-grid. I'm making all of my research done on my own funding and not funded by the donation which is coming through on that link there. So you can rest assured that that is going to be kept for when the project goes live, so to speak, and we can start to actually make this worthwhile. A long-term goal of myself would be possibly to create some kind of either information product or some form of not-for-profit organization just to help other people to be able to do the same thing or to take their existing properties and turn them into off-grid properties or to move closer to off-grid so that essentially we can all move away from things such as foreign oil, uh, the destruction of the environment, the mass extinction of species on the face of the planet and a wide variety of other different things which is being caused by the way that we're living at the moment. So. Subscribe to the video blog and I look forward to speaking to you again very, very soon.